the most likely shoreline effects of climate change on the Oregon coast is increased erosion, failing sea cliffs and landslides, and lowland flooding, and the development of hot spots along the Oregon coast where these occur. How are you? I'm good. Good to see you. So Peter, what are the most likely effects of climate change on the Oregon coast? Well, I think the first process that most people are, are aware of that's gotten the most uh, publicity is obviously sea level rise. Maybe up to a meter or more than a meter even of sea level rise can be expected over the next uh, century. Another process that's been impacted by climate change and variability is the fact that the mean winter wave heights have been increasing at a steady rate over the last several decades. We've, we've noticed this in our measurements of uh, wave buoys off the Oregon and Washington coast. The mean winter wave heights have been going up by a couple of centimeters per year and so over that 30-year time period where we've been measuring the waves that's an increase on the order of about a half a meter in terms of that mean winter wave height. Interestingly the maximum winter wave heights, the, the annual maximum wave height that we experience each year has been going up at a much faster rate. Those waves have been increasing at a rate of about 10 centimeters per year over that same 30-year time period where we've been measuring the waves, the annual maximum wave height has increased by about three meters. So that's a very large increase and it has a significant impact on the amount of uh, coastal erosion and coastal flooding that occurs. Some researchers suggest that our El Ninos will become more prevalent and more intense, and that has a very dramatic impact on coastal hazards. In particular, water levels are elevated during our El Nino events, and wave heights also increase during those events. People remember the 97-98 El Nino event where there's significant damage on the Oregon coast. If El Ninos are, are more prevalent in the future climate, then we'll have more of those kinds of processes occurring. What are the current predictions about sea level rise and shoreline erosion on the Oregon coast? Our ability to predict coastal retreat or coastal change on a planning scale of years to decades is, is quite poor to begin with, even without the impacts of climate change. And that's because it's a very complex interplay between the climate generating winds and waves, and then those waves are moving around sediment. So with that said, we do have some simple tools that we can use to at least get some idea of the bounds with which we can estimate shoreline retreat due to the estimates of, of sea level rise over the next several decades to centuries. So for example, if we have on the order of about a half a meter of sea level rise, simple geometry suggests that we're going to have shoreline retreat on the order of 100 to 200 times that in terms of a horizontal distance. And so that's going to translate into about 150 feet to upwards of maybe 300 feet of shoreline retreat associated with that half meter of, of sea level rise. For some of the higher estimates, upwards of, of one full meter of sea level rise by 2100, that's going to translate into 300 feet to even closer to maybe 600 feet of, of shoreline erosion. What are some of the risks associated with these predictions? So first and foremost, with these Climate impacts such as sea level rise, increasing wave heights, potentially more frequent and more intense El Ninos, we're going to see things like the amount of time that winter waves can impact the toes of sea cliffs and, and coastal bluffs, that's going to increase. And that's, that's a pretty obvious situation. The water level's getting higher. We're going to be beating against the bases of these features that much more often. That's going to increase coastal erosion rates. It's going to increase the potential for landsliding. And so what it's really going to do is, is cause an increased level of uh, susceptibility to the backshore properties, so whether that's coastal homes up on top of the bluffs, whether it's infrastructure in terms of highways and state parks, et cetera. Those kinds of uh, features are going to be more susceptible to these kinds of hazards in the future. The human response likely will be to reinforce their property with hardened shore protective structures, which while beneficial in the short term, have the long-term effect of actually narrowing the width of the beach as the sea level rises and the protection stays in place. Uh, over time and with more of these, this can reduce public access to the beach and actually increase the risk to human safety of people on the beach. Interestingly, sea level rise itself will have uh, less effect in the Pacific Northwest 
because plate tectonics here is actually lifting the land surface relative to the sea level. Unfortunately, those relative advantages will be erased when the next Cascadia subduction zone earthquake occurs and some areas will receive areas of subsidence of three to six feet.